in beautiful Kelowna here getting ready for a concert. Let's go, let's do this, let's share the gospel. Today we're talking about the sacrament of confession. That's one of the seven sacraments instituted by Christ. He has given us this sacrament because he wants to shower us with his grace and he wants to make sure that we get to heaven. This sacrament is the ordinary way in which God forgives our sins. Every time we sin or turn our back towards God or our brothers and sisters, God welcomes us back through this wonderful sacrament. This sacrament is also known as the sacrament of conversion, penance, forgiveness, or reconciliation. Through this sacrament, we meet a God who's so eager to meet us, so eager to embrace us, to forgive us, and give us the grace not to sin again. So late for my flight. It's so good to be here in Connecticut for a few days of school outreach, parish mission and concerts. In the first video on sacraments, which I will link below, I spoke about the matter and form of a sacrament. In this sacrament we come to God with our matter, that is our sin and sorrowful hearts. And then God responds in the form of love and mercy as the priest extends his arms over us and gives us the prayer of absolution. So what is sin? Sin is a thought, a word or a deed or even something that is omitted, something that we know we should do but don't do it. Something and all things that are contrary to the eternal will and the eternal heart and the eternal love of God. In other words, you and I sin when we freely reject good and choose evil. There are levels of sin. For example, saying a lie to get out of an awkward situation is a sin but not on the same level as intentionally killing someone. We usually distinguish between mortal and venial sin. We fall into mortal sin when there is serious or grave matter that we know we should not do. And we're free to choose not to do it, but we do it anyway. This is a direct turning away from charity or love turning our backs towards God. Venial sin, however, allows love and charity to continue working in our hearts, even though we have offended or wounded it. Why do we go to confession? See, confession is a beautiful sacrament and I myself make it a point to go to this sacrament every few weeks. The thing is, we sin, we all sin, no one is exempt from sin. And when we sin, we turn our back towards God, we in a sense reject God. And if we desire this love of God and love God, then we will stop at nothing to be reconciled with Him. Through the sacrament of reconciliation, we return or run to a loving and forgiving Father who waits so patiently for our return. Through this sacrament, because of the authority given to the Apostles, we can not only feel forgiven by God, but know beyond the shadow of a doubt that if we go with true contrition, our sins have been forgiven. So why do I need to go to a priest to confession? Can't I go to God in private 
and ask for his forgiveness. Well, the first thing to remember is that God wants to forgive our sins more than we could ever want to be forgiven. In fact, John 3.16 says that he sent his only son into this world to die upon the cross just to offer us forgiveness. But in order to be forgiven, we need to ask for forgiveness because only God and God alone can forgive our sins. Well then, the same question applies again. Why do I need to go to a priest and why can't I ask God for forgiveness alone? You could and you should ask for forgiveness from God as soon as you are aware of a sin that you have committed. But asking God for forgiveness is only part of the healing from our sin. You see, we're all part of something greater. We're all part of the body of Christ. Some of us the hands, some of us the feet, some of us the toes. Each part essential. The way the body of Christ works is that no part works independently of the other. You see, the arm does not work independently of the shoulder and should therefore look out for the other part. The concern should be for the entire body. We might think it's about me and my relationship with God, but it is not. St. Paul says, in fact, that when one part of the body suffers, the entire body suffers. For example, if we break our little toe, which I did once, the whole body suffers. The whole body is in a sense disabled and in pain. So our individual sin affects the entire body of Christ, even when we think that nobody knows about it and when we think that it is not harming anybody. Because my sin affects the entire body, I need to ask God for forgiveness, not only for my sin, but also for hurting the entire body of Christ. Sin creates a separation, and the sacrament of reconciliation mends this separation, reconciling us both with God and with the community. The priest has been given the authority by the head of the body to be an intermediary of God's grace, but also to represent the people of God. Now, I know that it is humbling to go to confession to a priest, but as a priest myself, I can assure you that there is nothing that you can say to the priest that is going to impress him. After being ordained six months, every priest has heard it all. Another thing to remember is that the priest is not there to offer judgment or condemnation but only the embrace and the mercy of God. The priest is bound by the seal of confession, so everything or anything you say in the confessional remains there. The priest cannot even allude to anything that has been said there. If he does, he is automatically excommunicated from the church. In the past, rather than confess their sins to a priest, people would stand in public in a church in front of the whole believing community and confess their sins to those gathered around. And then those there would offer forgiveness to the penitent. Today's practice is less embarrassing but has the same effect. It is the priest that welcomes us back into communion with God's people. It is mortal sin that takes us out of communion with God. And this is why we need the sacrament of reconciliation to bring us back into communion with the body of Christ. And we do this before we go to the sacrament of communion because we need to be in communion to receive communion. Well, the beauty of the sacrament of penance or reconciliation or confession is that no matter how sinful we are, no matter how much we have messed up, no matter how long it has been since we have been to the sacrament, God is always willing to bring us back, to embrace us and to reconcile us as part of the body of Christ. As with all my videos, there's no way I could cover the entire subject. If you want to know more about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, 
If you want to know how to prepare for the sacrament, please look at the link below and there'll be more information there.